All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Valve Steam Deck. Uh, this is model 1010. All right, so we're going to be using a JIS-1, J1 screwdriver, or PH1 screwdriver. We're going to remove all the screws from the bottom, but first things first, let's go ahead and turn this thing off. So you want to hold the power button down, okay? And then in here, you can go to shut down, press A, and then confirm. So it's going to shut down, wait till it turns off completely. Okay, still going, all right. So once this completely shuts off, you can see it's still on. All right, once it's completely shut off, I don't know if you can hear anything to know it's completely off, but once the screen's off, you, if you want, you can wait a bit longer, leave it sitting for a minute or something. But anyways, next we're gonna remove the micro SD card slot if you have one, all right? Just push it in, it pops out, and then take that out and set it aside. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and remove the screws from the bottom. Again, like I was saying, we're using a J1 um, or JS1, PH1, whatever you have that fits. Make sure your screwdriver holds tight and we'll remove all these screws. Keep the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that is I put them flat side down um, on my desk like that in the pattern I remove them. Okay. So you got uh, four on the outer corners that are much longer, and then these uh, inner ones uh, are much shorter. Um, so if you do happen to mix them up, uh, you can kind of just rearrange them like that. Uh, these screws are kind of like somewhat self-threading kind of screws. So you want to be careful. I always like to turn them backwards first to get them to like fall into the screw mount properly, because if you just to try and start turning it you might end up like screwing it in crooked and then you're gonna make the hole like not be able to hold the screws anymore all right so let's get all these screws out there are eight of them you're gonna need a tool or good fingernails to pry the cover open all right once we got all eight screws out we're gonna go ahead and pry this thing apart so there's a little gap here as you can see uh, basically I just get my fingernails in there and I kind of like pry on this. So I get my fingernails in and you can see we can kind of pop this apart. Okay, so just like that. Um, and then because all the buttons, it's a little bit tricky. I kind of like grab this and push it against my chest to kind of hold it. And we're gonna kind of go around here and pop that. Okay, and we're just gonna continue going around and pop here and all the way up the side, okay? So once we kind of pop all the sides out, ouch. <laughs> so we got all that side popped out and then the front, we're gonna go ahead and make sure to pop out this side as well. So same thing, just work your way around. Okay, now I'm gonna use my thumbnail. Okay, so you can slide it around like this. Again, you can use pry tools or whatever you have. Um, and we're just gonna kind of slide it around here. Um, but you do need, ow, a pretty thin tool to do this. Okay, so once you get all the way around like that, the top actually um, you can get out just by kind of lifting this, so you can lift like that. You can see there are little clips here as well, okay? But we can just flip it forward and it comes out. All right, so yeah, this thing is a little bit tough to pull, and yeah, there we go. Okay, so we're gonna look um, just quickly inside. The main reason we're taking this out is because we wanna actually upgrade the SSD. So there's two um, screws, one here and one here, and then there's a third one hidden underneath here. So make sure you get all those screws out. Okay. Um, once we do that, so we're gonna peel this up, okay. Um, you're gonna see this uses like a smaller M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD, right? So now we got those three screws out. Once we've done that, we're gonna lift slightly from this side and then kind of uh, pull it out this way because this cable is kind of resting on top here. Um, there's all these thermal pads in here, so be careful not to get this too dirty, okay? And also there's one on the CPU. This is the CPU heatsink um, and the CPU is under there. Um, these look like probably RAM memory, those uh, rectangular dark black square or rectangles, <laughs> right? We're going to undo this one screw here. Um, let me actually get a thumbnail of this one. So there's going to be the thumbnail. It's a little bit, okay, there's the thumbnail. We'll undo this screw. Oh, I think I made myself bleed pulling that. It kind of pulled my fingernail up. 
Anyways, we'll get that screw out. You can see it pops up like that, and then we can go ahead and wiggle and pull this out. So it does have two notches in there, which is usually an uh, M.2 SATA SSD, but uh, we did get this to work with an M.2 PCIe MVME SSD. Uh, customer brought me this uh, WD Black SN770M. Uh, this is a 2230. Um, I forgot which numbers, well, I think 22 is kind of like this measurement and then 30 is like this measurement. So 30 millimeter by 22 millimeter or something like that. Um, yeah. Anyways, I actually cloned this SSD, SSD onto this SSD and extended the main partition. So I tested this actually and it works. So you don't actually need to go and start completely fresh. If you want, you can. Um, there are videos that show how to do that. You basically have to go to um, Valve or Steam, whatever, their website, and get the software on a USB and all of that. Um, but cloning it is a lot easier, and also you don't have to worry about getting all your games and everything back on. So we're going to push this back on. Okay. And we're going to get this screw in. Oh, I didn't show... All everything I don't think there's really yeah there's a thermal pad under there I'm not gonna peel that up I'm just gonna kind of show like somewhat of a close-up to show what else is in here but I'm not gonna be taking it out um, you can see there's a lot of these flip latch zip or zero insertion force kind of connectors all of these little like the black tabs you can flip them up and then you can pull these cables out there's this little cable here probably for a speaker um, there's one on the other side as well I'm assuming those are for speakers. Uh, I don't know what all these little connectors are going to, but there's so many little extra like boards here, like this little board R. So I'm assuming that's for the right click, maybe for this one. Sorry for this one, maybe. And then there's separate thing here. There's another little cable here. There's so many cables in this thing. This kind, um, these kind of connectors, the white part you flip up, make sure you're not prying up on the black part. Another cable here and here, this little cable connecting there, there's one hidden under there. These are the buttons that go on the back. Um, so these are part of these little boards. Okay, there's more little ribbon connectors here and here and here and here and here and here. Lots of ribbon cables. Then there's the L one here. So yeah, I think this is for these buttons, the shoulder buttons. Okay. Then you got another little connector here, and that looks like the headphone jack, audio jack, and a cable that goes to there. It actually says audio on it, and it connects underneath here. So this is basically the motherboard or logic board because it has the um, CPU and the RAM and everything as well as the SSD. Okay, batteries here. Um, there's a battery. Is there a model? Model number F7A. All right. I don't know if any of that other information on there is important, but yep. And the battery connector has a very standard kind of like pull back connector. And yeah, not really much else to show here. You can see how they have the buttons mounted there like that. And this one has um, this the white tab thing on this one. You pull it up and, um, and it slides slightly up. Don't pull it too hard. And then that cable will release. But most of the other ones have these like flip latches. This one, you flip the white latch instead of the black ones. Um, yeah, not really much else to show here. I'm not going to be taking the whole thing apart again. The whole point of this was to upgrade the SSD and then I guess kind of show a little bit close up inside. Let's go ahead and make sure to put all of this back in. So this piece, again, you want to tuck it underneath the uh, fan cable here. So we'll slide that underneath and then we'll lower this down. Let's go ahead now and tighten back the screws. So I'm going to loosely fit this screw first and then get the other one. This is to make sure everything's lined up and then we'll get this one in the middle. All right, tighten that down. Once you've tightened that down, you can go ahead and pull this back over. I try and kind of flatten it out a little bit. All right, and then go ahead and just stick it back down and then we can go ahead and tighten these screws in. Right, these other two screws are uh, on the back, go into the back cover. All right, so these two are the, and these two are the shorter screws. 
anyways, let's go ahead and get the back cover back on now. So what you do is you start with the top first because that's what we took out uh, last earlier. So you're doing everything in reverse. Just lightly click that in. You can see it's flush now. And then just pinch and squeeze, like just squeeze it all together. Make sure the lines are all flush there. Down here, you'll want to pinch that all in as well. All right, and you can test these buttons to feel good. All right, now we just got to get the rest of those screws in and that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. Again, if it did, or I don't think I mentioned earlier, but if it did, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, again, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Uh, if you can't help out that way, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well because that's what the algorithm likes to see. Other than that, let's go ahead and get the rest of these screws in. It should be very easy to twist these screws. If it's a little bit difficult, you might want to unscrew it, make sure it clicks when you're unscrewing, and then go again, um, because it should be very easy. You can see how easy I'm twisting it with just two fingers, okay? So you wanna make sure that when you twist these screws in that it's going in really easily. That's how you know it's following the same screw path and not like, drilling out like new a new pathway and then ruining it so that next time the screw is gonna not be able to hold anymore so make sure that it's very easy to turn shouldn't be difficult at all almost zero resistance and yeah all right so obviously we are gonna turn it back on to show that the upgrade worked I don't know if I showed earlier um, but it only had like about 8 gigs left out of the 64 gigs or something that it came with. Um, so yeah, now we should see one terabyte. Um, don't forget to put the SD card slot uh, card back in if you had one. All right, and there we go. Just click that in. All right, and let's go ahead and power it back on. So it does take a while to power up, so just press it, give it some time. I didn't know when the customer first brought this to me, I was like, how does it turn on? And I was like pressing and holding slightly and then it kept turning off or the screen kept turning off. Um, but yeah, it does take a while to turn on. I mean, if you own one of these devices, you probably already know that. Um, oh, look, I'm bleeding because of that. It ripped my skin out. <laughs> Separated my fingernail from my thumb. Um, but anyways, you can see it's starting up. It's verifying, waiting for network data and all that. All right, so here we have it's on. What we're gonna do, we're gonna press B and then we're gonna go down to settings. All right, and then we're gonna go all the way down to storage. And here you can see we have, you don't need to see my face, there you go. Internal drive, 859.4 gigs free of 910.5, right? I don't know what the external three gigs is, but uh, the SD card slot I think was like a 512 gig, so I don't know what that thing is. Anyways, that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. Again, if it did, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Let's drop this. Bye.